welcome back to the super good super delicious podcast i'm your host carly with an ey and today we're going to be talking all things gluten-free living with people that eat gluten what to do and just a few things that i do and what i have learned since being diagnosed with celiac disease all right so first off I just want to preface everything. If you have never tuned in before, you have never seen any of my YouTube videos. I was diagnosed with celiac disease in sometime last year. I say that because it (laughs) was a process. I basically found out I probably have celiac disease in April, May of last year. But officially throughout all the testing and everything it wasn't until i did the endoscopy that i officially was given my diagnosis of having celiac disease in october of last year 2022 it feels like it's been so much longer so that's why i say over a year because i have actually not been eating gluten since around april or May of last, of 2022. My mom was diagnosed and then she told me, of course, because I struggle and then I went through the testing and yada, 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 here we are today. So I continued to eat gluten originally for the first blood test. I mean, I have a full YouTube video on this of my complete diagnosis if you wanna go check it out um my symptoms and everything i put them on there i go through my blood work and my panels of what they were called i forget what the celiac blood test is um transglutaminase and there's something else in there that i totally forget (laughs) what it's called but there was some pretty skyrocket numbers in there so for the first test i definitely had to be eating gluten still so if you do try to stop eating gluten as a test beware you will have to eat more you will have to eat gluten again in order for it to show up on the blood tests yes that is correct Or you can just remain undiagnosed, but know that you can't eat gluten because you have gone off gluten and you feel a hundred times better. So I see some comments on my videos for the ones I'm referring to. I have a couple, I have a one year update video and I have a full like symptom diagnosis video as well. Um, So I have a few on my channel already if you wanna check those out and I go into way more detail And a lot of this all started with a video of me. I just took a video once a week, um, like one week of being gluten-free. And I did 12 weeks of that. I actually did more, but then I stopped doing it. I would have loved to have had one week from every month of the year. That would have been so freaking cool um, to do one month, one, two months, you know, but whatever. It's too late for that now. But, um... Yeah, it all started with that 12 weeks of being gluten-free and I saw a huge difference. That was my first like three months going off of gluten. And so after my first blood test, they called me and were like, stop eating gluten immediately. Okay. Now, this is like a huge learning curve. If you can't eat gluten, you already know. It is a huge, huge thing. Um, gluten is in so so many things and a lot of things you don't even realize until like you'll never realize (laughs) until someone else tells you and you're like oh my god I was eating that and no wonder I was still sick so um, let's go over a few things to do if you find out that you have gluten intolerance or have been diagnosed celiac Um, so let's go over a few things if you have been diagnosed with celiac disease or just cannot eat gluten cannot tolerate it um, probably this would be more relatable for some of these things would be more 
relatable for like celiac disease um, because a lot of us are very sensitive. I literally just talked to my mom. This woman shares the same, probably all condiments, um, but specifically like butter. Now, if you have celiac disease, you already know. <laughs> Y'all should not be sharing condiments, okay? Because um, regular bread and gluten leaves crumbs and so much as a crumb can make you sick. A lot of people don't realize that, but I have to say, after speaking with my mom, she's like, I don't really find like anything happens. So there is definitely um, levels to how bad it can be. It also depends on if your gut is healed, in my opinion, okay? Because I noticed after my gut was healed, which took about a year, so if you've been eating gluten for your whole life and you find out you can't eat it anymore, be prepared to, for it to take up to a entire year, an entire year of healing in your gut. It is not, you will feel better, you will see and you will feel the benefits of stopping gluten quite quickly within a couple weeks but that gut will not be healed so if you accidentally get glutened or if you eat gluten and it's only been two three months your reaction might be worse because your gut is still not healed whereas if you get slight contamination after a year your gut is healed you get a little bit of contamination from a restaurant or something like that it could go both ways depending on you, so I shouldn't say that, but I do feel like once your gut is healed and potentially healed for years, you're, you potentially could have less severe reactions after that fact. Because your gut is healed, because it is healthy, it is not already damaged and weakened, okay? Some people their systems are so destroyed, stopping eating gluten does nothing. Like this one person I follow on Instagram, um, she was deathly ill in the hospital and she was, they cut all the gluten out once they figured it out and she still was not responding. Okay, so it can get that bad and I honestly see some comments that she gets and a lot of people kind of think it's like a joke or like don't believe celiac disease is real but like yeah if you know you know this is real okay some people have ruined it um, that are not celiac that have no problems with gluten but refuse to eat gluten and a lot of restaurant people now don't like gluten free people um, so it's unfortunate for us, but if you say you have celiac, they will take that seriously. So I would highly recommend everywhere you go um, to eat out, unless it is a fully gluten-free restaurant, to always, always, always say, I have, before you order, say, I have, just so you know, I have celiac disease or I have a severe gluten allergy that usually triggers them to, you know, they change the gloves, they make sure everything is clean and clear. Um, a new thing, if they're making like burritos, for example, um, they'll get like a new pan out. Um, they'll make sure they're nothing, your food is made first. That's another big one too. Making sure your food is made first because you're not gonna go and make a burger with a bun filled with gluten and then touch my gluten-free no I think that's asking for some problems so sometimes you have to be a little bit um, a little bit blunt or stern to make sure okay it's not something to be messed with if you know you know it sucks being glutened I actually had an experience um, at a vegan restaurant and I don't know what I was thinking because I told them I have celiac and they were like just so you know like we don't have we're not like dedicated celiac uh, gluten-free or anything like that 
and I should have took that as my cue to not order anything that was deep fried. So they have plenty of other items. They had plenty of gluten-free options. The problem is they shared the same deep fryer. So number two on my list of things not to do, eat from a shared deep fryer. It is horrible and it's really sucky too because you can't even go for some fries. Like, I love AW fries, okay? And whenever, if we get anything, I just get a lettuce wrapped burger, of course. So I think I've always been good. I always order mine first, but I think I've always like been good eating a lettuce wrapped burger from AW. But I have eaten fries before and it's just nowadays too risky. Um, I was a little riskier before, but now that my gut is golden, okay, uh, I don't like to do that anymore. <laughs> I don't like to play around like that. Okay, so I will go to like New York fries, which is like strictly fries. I know they have buns, but like they're not going on the deep fryer too and nothing else is going in the deep fryer so i trust them but yeah pretty much anywhere else i do not trust for fries unless they have a dedicated gluten free fryer okay y'all okay uh which is really unfortunate because we love us some fries okay something else um i want to chat about if you live with someone that eats gluten okay so i'm the only gluten-free person in my household and i have my man's and I have his sister and they both eat gluten, okay? Now, actually, Clay is pretty good um, at not eating gluten. Uh, he's not a huge bread guy, uh, anything like that. Um, so, he is very, he's very considerate, that's the word, and cares a lot because we've been together for 10 years now and he has seen me go through it for 10 years y'all and it got really bad this last couple of years where I was sick almost after every single meal I was literally almost every dinner time I would eat and I'd have to just go lay down I was in the bathroom um, I was just so uncomfortable all the time it gave me really bad food anxiety so if we ever went out to eat I was just so scared I was gonna end up sick and having to run to the bathroom and then just feeling like garbage and needing to just lay down and like you don't want to do that when you go to your family's house for dinner not cute sorry guys i don't feel well like after eating a bowl of pasta or literally anything it was so bad so he's extremely considerate and if you do have a gluten allergy or any food allergies i highly recommend leaving your person who is not your person because they are not considerate okay unless you've been married for like 50 years okay that's a little bit different if your partner is not considerate about your food allergies dumb business <laughs> you do not need that kind of negativity in your life okay that is one thing i will say if he wanted to he would okay and clay's made a lot of great efforts in trying all of the things that I make. So gluten-free pastas, gluten-free breads, etc., etc. There's so many good things that he's like, wow, this is really delicious. And in fact, my local gluten-free bakery. I'm so sorry to everyone that doesn't live in St. Catharines or Niagara region. <laughs> my gluten-free bakery makes the best, the best gluten-free bread that exists. Um, that's probably gonna go to the grave with me. There is nothing better out there definitely nothing store-bought will compare and they do make vegan and non-vegan gluten-free products um, but they even say the vegan is actually better can you believe that what a coincidence he likes my gluten-free bread more than any other store-bought bread that he's had non-gluten-free okay that's saying something. The gluten-free passes kind of suck, okay? Um, my favorite brand is Catelli, but for the most part, I almost always, I think, overcook it slightly where the noodles fall apart a little bit. Um, if you are too rough, 
with mixing, say you're making something that requires mixing the pasta together, it will fall apart. Uh, spaghetti, you will never get a nice twist long, it, it will break. Not, not into tiny pieces, but it will break. It is just slightly annoying, but the flavor there is good. It gives an al dente almost permanently, so it's good, it's good. I have picked up a couple boxes of different pastas, so we're gonna do a taste test of different pastas over the coming weeks, and we're gonna try some stuff out. I have, I think it's called Chicka Pea. Chickpea based, I'm pretty sure, and I forget what the other one is, quinoa something. Um, we have tried a few different lentil pastas because they are much higher in protein. So those are fun, they're more pricey. So if you are wanting, are looking for less expensive options, go for the Catelli brand, that's what I prefer. The brown rice pastas, we do not enjoy, ever. Maybe people out there do, but they just don't cook the same, they don't taste the same, they have like that dirt flavor. <laughs> um, we don't love the brown rice pastas, but I will definitely be making an update, either video or podcast episode, when I go ahead and try a bunch of different gluten-free pastas because I'm just gonna stock them up over the coming weeks and we're gonna try them down, knock them down and see how they cook, see how they taste, texture, yada yada. So let me know if you want that in a, I think it might do better in a video form only instead of podcast. Um, so you can actually see the pasta, you know what I'm saying? So I think we'll do that. Clay really likes his wraps and I don't blame him because I don't really like wraps but sometimes I would like a good, a good burrito. Okay, y'all. Um, I also, I'm going to try Promise, the brand. I'm going to see if their wraps are vegan um, and try them. I've heard they're really good. Again, shout out um, my girl Danica. She puts me on to gluten-free finds that are delicious. So once again, <laughs> shout out because I need to go find those wraps and try them. Um, so that's one thing. And the thing is, I don't really mind having wraps in a shared kitchen because wraps don't have crumbs. They're not gonna just crumb everywhere because I am a person that gets really OCD and really hyper fixated about germs and a bit of a germaphobe. So to me, gluten is like, germs okay gluten to me is like a bacteria that will kill me and then i get really freaked out and i just need to wash everything i need to clean everything and everything is dirty and gonna kill me so this is how i see things i get really paranoid but like i have been sick for years and not knowing why okay so when you come from a sickness and you never want to go back there it's easy to understand, you, you know? So I don't mind having wraps in the house. I don't want to be that person that's like, you're not allowed to have any bread or gluten in the house, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know what? You should, to an extent, be that person, okay? You should not just have to change your life and cater to the other person, vice versa, they shouldn't cater to you. So there should be a good prom compromise, good compromise between the two of you on what you're comfortable with and what you're uncomfortable with, okay? That is my tips on living with a partner. There's probably way more, but I'm just gonna try and keep it short. This is gonna be super long probably because I just felt like chatting. So I thought, let's just chat about being gluten-free. I'm not following a strict protocol as you can probably tell. Okay, this I find really funny. So I made a video, you might have seen it, a little hack video because I was like, I'm a genius, obviously, where I had frozen bread. So if you are gluten free, you know, you mostly keep your bread in the freezer because you don't want that going bad um, because it goes moldy fast and also it costs some money, okay? It ain't no $2 bread, okay? So we need to save every last bit of that bread in the freezer. And we just take out what we need, okay? And then we defrost it. So if you're like me, 
and you are a last minute person or you're like, mm, I could go for a sandwich, but your bread is frozen. Well, my friends, I made a little hack, hacky poo. It actually started with my father. My father's like the most forgetful person. Um, the amount of times he told me when I visited last, just eat some chicken. <laughs> Dad, I don't eat meat, remember? <laughs> I have been vegan for over five years <laughs> and he every time okay I mean we do live across Canada from each other and since I've been vegan we have lived across Canada from each other so I understand why he would forget I don't know if your dad is like my dad but if he is this will be so relatable to you I used to turn the oven on on like whatever just preheat it to 350 so I would just preheat the oven to 350. Once it hits preheat at 350, your bread is defrosted. Magic. It's usually great and a little toasty maybe even. And then, you know what? This man is like, why are you turning on the oven to defrost a piece of bread? You are wasting energy. I wish I could actually remember what he said, but he basically, the oven doesn't need to be on. Put it in a pan on the stove. Actually, genius, okay. This man gave me the most genius idea ever. Although the other half of it was me because then, then I decided. So first of all, get your pan hot, get a nonstick pan hot, okay. You could throw your bread in there, your frozen bread in there and it will just defrost and toast beautifully. Flip it over, toast the other side. It's perfect, okay. I decided, well, grilled cheese is like buttered on the outside, so like, I could probably butter it frozen. Let's see what happens. Not only does the butter make a nice crispy, like a grilled cheese, crispy, salty deliciousness layer, right? It also locks in the moisture into the bread, so it doesn't dry the bread out. So one side which you could flip it over and toast the other side a little bit but i like to leave the other side a little bit just free it is soft squishy beautiful and then on the other side crispy crunchy buttery salty deliciousness like a grilled cheese on the outside oh, guys. <laughs> i'm a genius genius i tell you now however people were coming for me for my video I'm thinking I'm sharing the best hack in the world to my friends that eat gluten-free bread and always keep frozen bread in the freezer, okay? <laughs> I understand um, people have microwaves, throw your bread in the microwave, also perfectly fine, cool. Uh, there are toaster bags, you could just put your bread in there and put it in the toaster. The audacity, someone told me to buy my own toaster, a separate one. Who on earth wants two toasters in their house? Not me. So anyways, that was one comment that <laughs> stuck with me. But you could use the toaster bag, put the toast in the toaster, the shared toaster, that's fine. Um, that is what people do, and then microwaves. I enjoy the crispy crunchy, the salty buttery outside of my bread, okay? I will never do it anywhere, any way else, never. It is perfection for any sandwich. Do what you want, okay? Don't have to do it my way, you might not like it that way, but you gotta give me some credit for being a little creative here. I've never seen a tip like that before, okay? <laughs> We're going to wrap this up. Let me just check my notes and let's see what else we feel like talking about today regarding gluten-free celiac diet, or rather, I hate the word diet, but it is what it is. There's not really, it's a way of life, to be honest. I saw some notes from my dietitian. So I had a conversation with my dietitian um, shortly after I was diagnosed. I can't remember, maybe November. So I had been gluten-free since like April, May, and then endoscopy, October, and then uh, called with the dietitian probably like November of last year. And I saw that I had written down brow and I was like an acronym for barley rye oats wheat and I'm like that is so perfect how have I forgotten that 
those are the main culprits you need to avoid that have gluten. Um, oats, some people are okay with, okay? I always make sure my oats are gluten-free. You can get gluten-free certified oats, but it is good to have on the list, I understand, because oats are one of the most highly contaminated, technically non-gluten thing that usually contains gluten. Um, I used to eat regular oats and then I was like, mm, still kind of feel, feel kind of bogged down a little bit, like maybe it's the oats because it's the first thing you eat in the morning, you can kind of tell. I decided to switch to gluten-free oats and I don't feel like that anymore. I gotta make a whole video on this, guys. Please let me know if you feel the same way because this is the most annoying thing. The most annoying thing being, maybe, maybe, being celiac and hard on being celiac is the oats because so many companies make products with oats and they're not gluten-free, which means like the majority of us will not even touch the product and the amount guys the amount of companies coming out with vegan chocolate that is an oat base y'all the amount of people that have celiac disease that also cannot eat dairy is a big is a big 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 amount okay so we're we're struggle with oats i think most of us and we also can't have dairy so that means regular a lot of regular chocolate people can't have because they can't have dairy and then those of us that are also vegan and gluten-free a ton of the vegan chocolate is oat based and not gluten-free shout out lindor because lint says gluten-free oats in and shout out silk too in the ingredients gluten-free oats Yes, please. I will pay for that. Please, everyone, just use gluten-free oats, please. It's so annoying. It's so annoying. There is a brand. Let me, I don't know if I should mention it because what if I'm wrong? There is a brand out there that used to use all gluten-free oats and all of their dairy-free products, milk products, creamer, everything, okay? They went ahead and switched from gluten-free oats to regular oats in all of their oat based products now what a disappointment if that was your favorite brand and next time you pick it up you just double check the ingredients or you don't and lo and behold no more gluten-free oats no more gluten-free labels what i would be so upset so upset okay i understand things are expensive i understand gluten-free oats are more expensive to go through the processing but i'm not asking for a certified gluten-free label I'm just asking for it to say gluten-free oats in the ingredients. Okay. Please let me know if you are also like me and find that extremely annoying. <laughs> we want our oat-based things. <laughs> just make them gluten-free, please. To wrap this episode up, I'm going to leave you with a couple of my favorite products that I've found or that I eat regularly. Shout out Honey's plant-based ice cream. Toronto based, they are the best, I'm not kidding, the best ice cream brand, vegan ice cream I have ever had. They do not beat anyone. So Delicious is second, a good second, but I'm telling you. And the flavors they have, I just recently got the candy cane with the chocolate crackles in it. It is so good. The Rocky Road, the coffee with chocolate freckles, and the mint chip's really good too. <laughs> and the that holiday candy cane one that I just got. Delicious. Okay, shout out Honey's plant-based ice cream made in Toronto. Love my Canadian brands. Okay. That is one of the things that I've been obsessed with since my local food store started carrying them in the summer. Um, another one that I love, chocolate the best chocolate bar vegan chocolate bar i know i said lindor they make pretty good ones but the best i think i have to give it to vego i forget what their like company brand is they make a chocolate bar with hazelnuts in it this chocolate is the creamiest milk chocolatey melt in your mouth not waxy beautiful the best chocolate uh so that's ice cream that's chocolate 
what else have I been loving on? Oh, you know what? My favorite crackers are turmeric lentil crackers from R.W. Garcia. They make these delicious turmeric lentil crackers. They taste like Doritos. They are so, so good. My favorite is to eat them with a, I forget the brand, Sunflower Kitchen, I think, hummus. And it's a red pepper hummus with basil in the middle. Basil pesto, sorry, basil pesto in the middle. The best combination that exists, okay? They are the best. Another one that I recently tried was Crunch Master crackers. Um, I think all of them are gluten-free, I'm not sure. I've tried them at the Gluten-Free Expo with some vegan cream cheese. And I was like, where are these crackers from? I need them. I guess Costco. That is another favorite of mine. That is going to be it for the episode today. Uh, thank you so much for listening and watching if you're watching. I very much enjoy just chatting away to my phone, <laughs> pretending y'all are on the other side. So I hope you learned something. I hope you got something out of this gluten-free episode. I was hard on the celiac disease today, okay? But your girl is getting hungry. I don't know if you can hear my pew hurt, but my stomach is literally, literally growling as we speak. Thank you so much for watching and listening to this episode of the Super Good, Super Delicious podcast. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Bye!